大家好，欢迎来到我的频道。今天黄仁勋接受了一个重磅的采访，这个信息量大到非常大，非常惊人。不仅谈到了他对马斯克的一个看法，还对 AMD 和 OpenAI 的新的交易进行了点评。我认为这非常值得去深入的剖析，因为现在很多人在担忧这种投资啊，循环投资会引来一个非常大的泡沫，和当年的互联网泡沫有点相似。我们等会儿还会聊到去。对比当年的互联网泡沫。Financing because that has been something that has raised a lot of questions on Wall Street since you cut this deal with OpenAI.、Uh, yesterday, it, it, Bloomberg is reporting that you have a two billion dollars in financing that you're going to be involved with with XAI to help them with these same stories. But this idea of circular financing, your your customers can't afford to buy these chips yet, so you're going to help them out with money along the way. That leads some people to think back to what happened、uh, with a, with companies during.、Uh, The big buildup, like a Lucent or a Nortel, in the early days, is this different? And if so, how? Well, first of all, XAI.、Uh, I'm super excited about the financing opportunity that they're doing. You know, if, the only the only regret I have about XAI, we're an investor already.、Mm -hmm. the The only regret I have is I didn't give him more money. You know, it, almost everything that Elon's part of, you, you really want to be part of as well. And and、uh, he gave us the opportunity to invest in XAI. I'm just delighted by that. And so that's not that's an investment into. A really great future company, and I'm really excited about that. That's not venture, venture.、Uh, that's not、uh, vendor financing per se. But what's going on? What's going on in the world versus what happened in 2000 is just dramatically different. You know, back then, as you recall, there were Pets.com, Hospitals.com, and the, the, all of the internet companies combined was what 30, 40 billion dollars in size. If you look at the hyperscalers now, that's where the first tranche of AI infrastructure is building. If you look at the AI, the the hyperscalers, that's about two and a half trillion dollars of business that's already operating today. That business, that two and a half trillion dollar business, and the capex that goes underneath that is about call it five hundred billion dollars.、Mm -hmm. That transition from a classical CPU based computing to now generative AI computing powered by GPUs, that transition is just starting. So we're gonna, we've got to build into half a trillion dollars worth of capacity. Infrastructure that's already naturally growing by itself, and we're in the beginning phases of that. We're, if you just look at Nvidia's AI infrastructure business, you know, call it a couple of hundred billion dollars so far. You know, we're a couple of hundred billion dollars into a multi-trillion dollar build-out. So that's number one. The second part of it that's really unique is that we have a new generation of AI companies. The new AI companies like OpenAI and Anthropic and XAI and and companies that are that are well, you know, Thinking Machine Labs from Mira and. Ilya Suskever's SSI and、uh, Misha's company Reflection, and I mean, there's a whole bunch of amazing AI, AI model builders now. This generation of AI model builders, what's happened in the last several months, a transition happened that is really, really important. For the last several years, they've been generating tokens, you know, these AI tokens, basically at a loss. And the reason for that is because the early AI models weren't; they were super interesting,、uh, uh, really captivated a lot of attention. But they weren't useful enough to pay for.、It. The last several months has been very clear that the new technology is now reasoning.、Mm -hmm. It's doing research before it answers a question. It goes on the web and studies other PDFs and websites. It can now use tools, generate information for you, and it creates creates responses that are really useful. I use it every day to the point where now the tokens are profitable. The, the、yeah. question, though, is who is going to continue to pay for that build-out? Is it the big companies like a, a, a Procter and Gamble? Is it a big? Is it consumers who are going to do this? I mean, my doctor showed me the AI that he's using, and it's incredibly helpful. But there's still a question about whether he's going to pay for it or the company he works for is going to pay for it. Well, hopefully both. I think the、uh, there's the consumer part of it. You know, a lot of OpenAI customers are consumers, and they're paying for it.、Uh, but the thing that's really cool is that the enterprise AI build-out that's happening now. My my favorite enterprise AI、uh, uh, service is Cursor.、Hmm. Cursor is an AI coder, and every one of our engineers, 100%, is now assisted by AI coders, and our productivity has gone up incredibly. And so you're now seeing enterprise AI companies like Cursor, Open Evidence. I love Lovable.、Um, all of these companies are some of the fastest growing companies in the world, and they address enterprise. And so enterprise AI is here. I wonder how you think about Jensen, the ultimate destination. Uh, where all this is actually building toward.、Um, I don't know. There was a, a post from David Connie, who's a Sequoia partner, this week, saying, "Look, AGI is the only thing that can justify the volumes of capital spending right now. Artificial general intelligence." At the same time, many of the model builders and experts are pushing out the date where that maybe is going to be achievable.、Uh, meantime, you're talking about annual 
generations of chips. How fast did they depreciate? We're putting all this capital in these data centers that it's just not clear like when we get to the end, or is it just a treadmill? We are going to have incredibly profitable and incredibly useful AIs long before AGI. Mm -hmm. And for example, right now, Cursor AI. Yeah. You know, Cursor, Cursor's uh, uh, AI software coder is incredibly useful. All of our engineers use it. We have some 40,000 engineers. Uh, almost every one of them are going to use it, and they're, they're loving it. And so we're they're seeing, using it instead of something else, presumably, right? So these well, are there's, displacing there's several, things. Yeah, um, they're not, they're, this is a brand new thing. Yeah. Uh, remember, AI, unlike, unlike previous technologies, previous technologies are tools that humans use. Excel is a tool that humans use. Um, a web browser is a tool that humans use. For the very first time, we have technology that can actually use tools by itself. And so Cursor uses you know, Visual C++, and, it, it's, uh, uh, and now we have uh, uh, Gemini agents uh, that are able to use the browser and browse, browse for, for uh, uh, groceries or you know, destinations or book travel for you, and, and it, can use tra it can use tools by itself. So, so this is really quite an extraordinary thing. This tool users, the tool industry is a few trillion dollars. Yeah. Tool user industry is $100 trillion, which is the reason why everybody's so excited about the future of technology, because it could augment labor, it can increase the productivity of labor, and here at NVIDIA, you know, it's increased our product productivity tremendously. You've already said you wish you could have bought more OpenAI and maybe invested more in XAI at this point. That implies that you don't think that this is all redundant, because a lot of the players, I mean, if I read what Sam Altman says and the message he tries to convey, it's as if... They're sprinting to try to stay ahead of everybody else because they think it's not going to be room for everybody necessarily who's trying to do something similar. I think there's general intelligence and I think there's specialized intelligence. Yeah. We love general, gener when I hire engineers, I like them to be generally intelligent and that's, that's a great thing. But once they come to NVIDIA, we make them highly specialized intelligent so that they could build things that you know, NVIDIA needs. And so I, I think the idea of specialized intelligence versus generalized intelligence will continue to happen. And where the real value for enterprises and companies are is specialized intelligence, and where the value for consumers, general intelligence. 采访中啊，这个记者提了一个华尔街最关心的问题，就是英伟达为 OpenAI 和 XAI 提供融资，是否类似于二零零零年电信泡沫时期朗讯或者说北电那种高风险的供应商融资？黄胜勋坚决否认了这一点，他强调。对 XAI 的投资是战略投资，他直言对 XAI 投资超级超级兴奋啊，并且唯一遗憾遗憾的是啊，没有投更多，没有投更早，没有给马斯克更多的钱。他认为马斯克参与的几乎所有的事情都值得加入啊，只不过他现在没这么多钱，意思就是有钱的话早就投更多了。据报道呢，英伟达是 XAI 最新一轮两百亿美元融资中的投资者之一啊，好像是投二十亿啊。然后与二零零零年泡沫的本质区别，他指出啊。二零零零年，互联网公司总规模只有三百到四百亿美元，而现在的超大规模数据中心啊，业务规模已经达到二点五万亿美元，并且每年约有五千亿美元的资本支出。AI 的转型才刚刚开始，他认为这是一个数万亿美元的增量市场，而非泡沫。在提到 OpenAI 的盈利能力，他提到 AI 模型现在已经变得足够的。有用，以至于啊，他们产生的 token， 也就是服务使用量呢，已经开始盈利了。OpenAI 作为目前估值最高的初创公司呢，收入正在指数级的增长。啊，我不知道这个，因为他 Open， 我我对他这一点说 OpenAI 已经开始盈利，表示怀疑，因为他真的太烧钱了。你说这个 token 的收费？能多大程度上让它盈利呢？反正那个大行投行的预测是要到二零二九年才有可能盈利 OpenAI， 啊，所以不是现在盈利，他应该说的是未来能够盈利啊。Oh, if you don't mind, maybe we can just run through some of these headlines and you can explain what's happening from your perspective. I'd love to. Okay, let's start with the deal that you cut first with OpenAI that you've talked a lot about. That was then followed up by this deal earlier this week with AMD and OpenAI. It's got a lot of people trying to figure out what the dynamics are of this industry.、Um, What do you think about it? Did you know about that deal before it was announced? Not, not really. But、uh, our deal is very different than theirs.、Um, yeah. We've been working with OpenAI、uh, through uh, uh, Azure, Microsoft, and OCI and CoreWeave, and so through third parties for quite a long time. In fact, in 2016, I delivered the world's very first AI supercomputer called DGX1 to a startup, a nonprofit startup in San Francisco, and that company turned out to have been OpenAI. And so we've been working with them. 
uh, for quite a long time. The OpenAI partnership is an addition to what we're already doing with them in the cloud. All of the cloud contracts, we're going to continue to execute on all that. Mm -hmm. But our partnership with them is quite unique in the sense that this is the first time we're going to sell directly to them. Until then, until now, we've been largely selling, we're only selling through the clouds. And so we're going to keep doing that. But uh, the thing that's really exciting is that now, uh, by selling directly to them, we could help prepare them for a day when they're self-hosted hyperscaler. And um, uh, our agreement uh, basically uh, uh, entails uh, selling uh, entire systems and infrastructure to them. Uh, you know, we're the only company in the world today that really focuses on building the entire AI infrastructure from CPUs to GPUs to networking chips and switches of all kinds and all the software stacks that go along with that. And so as a, we're quite a unique partner for them to be able to do this. I guess the question becomes, it's great for you to sell it directly to them, but they don't have the money to buy it at this yeah. point. Is that why the deal was structured the way it is, where you'll get a stake in OpenAI over time? Not, they don't have the money yet. Yeah. And the way that, that um, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, for every gigawatt of AI factories, you're probably going to need about 50 to $60 billion for the land-powered shell and all the computing and networking and all that, you know, everything that goes along with that. And... Uh, they're going, to have to, they're going to have to raise that money through, first of all, their revenues, which is growing exponentially, um, uh, equity or debt. And, uh, and they gave us the opportunity to uh, invest along, uh, as, alongside other investors uh, when the time comes. And so it, it's not something we have to do, but it's something that, that uh, they're giving us the, the opportunity to do. And I would love to do. You know, one of the things that, that uh, uh, we did, we invested in OpenAI early on. My only regret is that we didn't invest more. I mean, this is, this is the most profitable, well, the most valuable uh, startup company ever. And so this is a, a great opportunity. You, you mentioned that your deal is very different from AMD's. AMD is in a situation where they're basically giving away a big chunk of their company to be able to be a partner with OpenAI and sell them some of their goods. Is that how you read it? Yeah, I, I saw the deal. Um, it's it's uh, imaginative. It's, it's uh, unique and surprising. Uh, considering, considering they were so excited about their next generation product, I'm, I'm surprised that they would give away 10% of the company before they even built it. And so, um, anyhow, it's, it's uh, clever, I guess. Yeah, I, I wondered the same thing. And, and Lisa Sue, who, by the way, is a distant cousin of yours, Yeah, right? she's terrific. Yeah, she's terrific. The, the way they've set this up, though, um, of giving it away, they're also making some big assumptions that their chips are going to be able to compete with your chips that are coming out down the road. Do you think that's the case? Well, you know, our chips are uh, quite special and uh, we're running really fast. We're the only company in the world today that, that builds all of the chips inside an AI infrastructure. And today, back when we first started, uh, five years ago even, an Ampere chip or a Hopper chip is just one chip. Today, if you want to build one of these AI supercomputers, it takes a whole bunch of different types of chips to get the performance out of it because, you know, Moore's Law, the transistor itself is really slowing down. And if we want to create those X factors of performance increase every single year and we're delivering these new systems every single year and every year it's multiple times faster than the last generation. In order for us to do that, we have to optimize the entire AI infrastructure. That supercomputer is the most com complex computer the world's ever made and we optimize across all of that, design new chips every year. So one chip alone is not probably going to be able to deliver the type of results we do. And, uh, but anyways, uh, they're a really good company and we take them very seriously. 关于英伟达与 OpenAI 的合作，黄仁勋澄清了几个关键点：从云端转向直销。过去呢，英伟达主要是通过微软，呃，这些云服务向 OpenAI 去供货，而现在呢，他们首次决定啊，直接向 OpenAI 销售。他的目标呢，就是成为自营的超大规模数据中心。这项合作是为了帮助 OpenAI 成为一个自托管的超大规模的数据中心运营商。英伟达将向 OpenAI 销售完整的系统和基础设施，包括了 CPU、GPU、网络芯片和全套全套的这个软件站。然后对 AMD 和 OpenAI 交易的看法，啊，这个有点像背后捅了这个黄仁勋一刀，因为他把钱投到这个 OpenAI， 然后 OpenAI 去买 M AMD 的那个芯片。被问及 AMD 与 OpenAI 的新交易的时候，黄仁勋的评论既直白又充满竞争的意味。他说。AMD 宣布向 OpenAI 提供值，提供芯片，并给予 OpenAI 高达百分之十的股权的期权。啊，黄仁勋说：“这富有想象力啊，独特且令人惊讶。”对百分之十股权的质疑，他表达了惊讶，质疑 AMD 在尚未完成完全推出下一代产品，比如说 MI 4 5 0系列
之前就出让了百分之十的公司股票，他认为这很巧妙，他也没有直接批评。然后他提到了英伟达的优势啊，就是面对竞争呢，黄仁勋强调了英伟达的全在优势，他们是唯一一家能够生产 AI 基础设施所有芯片，包括 CPU、GPU， 我刚刚说过了这些和软件、硬件和软件的公司。他认为由于摩尔定律放缓呢。单靠一颗芯片已经无法提供所需的性能，英伟达必须优化整个 AI 超级计算机，并且啊，以每年数倍的速度提升性能。黄仁勋这个采访其实揭示了 AI 基础设施的军备竞赛的残酷现状啊，金融创新已经成了必需品，就是建设 AI 工厂能所需的资金高达了数百亿甚至数千亿美元。OpenAI 的公司需要创新的方式来获得算力。英伟达通过战略投资锁定客户，而 AMD 呢，则通过股权激励作为突破口，都是为了解决客户的这个钱荒的问题啊。这个钱还不够吗？烧这么多钱还不够啊？然后呢，第二呢，就是这个算力成为了稀缺的资源。正如 OpenAI 的 CEO 赛姆奥特曼说，这个算力是增长的巨大的限制，最大的限制。英伟达和 AMD 的巨额交易啊，都证明了市场对 GPU 的永不满足的渴望啊，包括 XAI 也对这个东西非常渴望。然后，全债与股权，英伟达的策略呢，就是技术霸主的一个打法。其实最好的用用最好的这个全债集成技术，锁定客户，同时通过投资加深这个关系啊，紧密联合在一起，感觉就是像曹操那个铁索连舟啊。只不过现在你没有一个呃这个诸葛亮这样的草船借箭、放火烧曹营的这个人啊，没有他他没有这种对手啊。AMD 的策略呢是颠覆者的打法，通过股权的绑定啊，将自身命运和 OpenAI 成功连接在一起，以金融优势为突破口啊，换取它的芯片大规模应用的机会和宝贵的合作反馈。而这种供应商与客户深度绑定的这个投资模式啊，正成为 AI 时代独有的新的商业模式。你认为谁会在 AI 芯片的军备竞赛中更胜一筹？是 AMD、英伟达还是台积电呢？在评论区告诉我你的答案。感谢您收看，我们下期再见。再见之前一定要点赞订阅我的频道啊，打开小铃铛。